From this presentation onwards, we will learn how to write a program to multiply two matrices. And in this presentation, we will start our discussion with the basic understanding of matrix multiplication. And then we will move on to the actual program. So let's get started. Suppose we have these two matrices and we want to multiply them. But before multiplying these two matrices, let me tell you one important fact related to resultant matrix. The size of the resultant matrix always depends on the number of rows of the first matrix and number of columns of the second matrix. In this example, we can see the number of rows of the first matrix are 3 and number of columns of the second matrix are also 3. Therefore, the size of the resultant matrix will be 3 cross 3. Okay. Now, in order to obtain the first element of the resultant matrix, we will take the first row from this matrix and first column from this matrix. And then what we will do is, we will take the first element from this row and first element from this column and we will multiply them. Then we will take the second element from this row and second element from this column and multiply them. Then we will take the third element from this row and third element from this column and multiply them. Finally, we will add them all to obtain the final result. 1 into 1 is 1, 1 into 2 is 2, 3 into 3 is 9, 9 plus 2 plus 1 is equals to 12. Therefore, 12 will get stored in this particular location of this resultant matrix. In order to obtain the second element, that is, in order to obtain the element at this particular cell, we first have to identify the location of this cell. We can see that the location of this cell is first row and second column, right? Therefore, we will take first row from this matrix and second column from this matrix. And then what we will do is, we will take the first element from this row and first element from this column and multiply them. Then we will take the second element from this row and second element from this column and multiply them. Then finally, we will take this element and this element and multiply them. And then we will add them all to obtain the final result. 1 into 2 is 2, 2 into 2 is 4, 3 into 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9. Therefore, the final result is 9, which will get stored in this location. Similarly, we can fill this cell as well by using the same procedure which we have done for these two. In order to fill this cell, we have to first identify the location of this cell. We can see that the location of this cell is first row and third column. Therefore, we will take the first row from this matrix and third column from this matrix. And again, we will perform the same procedure. The result comes out to be 11. The rest of the locations we can fill in the same way. I will move the slides very quickly and your job is to verify them all. This is our resultant matrix. After obtaining the resultant matrix, let's now try to understand some important points related to matrix multiplication. And here is our first point. In order to multiply two matrices, number of columns of first matrix must be equal to number of rows of second matrix. Let's try to understand this point with the help of an example. Suppose we have these two matrices and we want to multiply them. We can see here the number of columns of this matrix is equals to number of rows of this matrix. Therefore, we can multiply these two matrices. There is another way to look into it. Here, we can see number of columns are equal to number of rows, right? But why we are imposing this condition? Let's consider another example. In this matrix, we have three rows and two columns. And in this matrix, we have three rows and three columns. We can see here the number of columns are not equal to the number of rows. Therefore, according to this line, we cannot multiply these two matrices. But why is it true? If we want to obtain the first element of the resultant matrix, we have to take the first row from this matrix and first column from this matrix. And then we have to take the first element from this row and first element from this column and we have to multiply them together. Then we have to take the second element from this row and second element from this column and multiply them together. But what happens to this element? This element is isolated. There is no element over here which we can multiply with this element. 
and you can see here we are traversing the columns one by one and here we are traversing the rows one by one that is why the number of columns must be equals to number of rows before multiplying the matrices okay therefore we can say that it is mandatory to have number of columns of first matrix to be equal to number of rows of second matrix now let me consider another point also the size of the resultant matrix depends on the number of rows of first matrix and number of columns of second matrix we have already considered this point that size of resultant matrix always depends on the number of rows of the first matrix and number of columns of the second matrix in this case we can see the size of the resultant matrix will be 3 cross 3 and this is our resultant matrix which we have obtained already right now let me consider one more example to make this point clear Suppose we have these two matrices and we want to multiply them. We can see here that number of columns of this matrix are three and number of rows of this matrix are also three. Therefore, we can multiply these two matrices, right? Now, what will be the resultant matrix? Resultant matrix will be a two cross two matrix, and you can always verify these values on your own. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.